and I give um, a lot of advice to young players that I meet. And uh, the one thing I tell them is, when you move here, everybody can, ev mostly everybody can play really well. Um, I think what's going to set you apart is, is what can you bring to the song, um, your style, and 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 keep your style. Don't you know? Don't change to try to be somebody else. You know. Don't you know? I couldn't when I moved here. You know, I I couldn't be Mucker Rose. I couldn't be Mary Mandela. But I took and learned from them and had my own style, and I stuck to that. And I think if you stick to what you do, and it's and it's good, and it's and and you're really working for the song, I think the sky's the limit. You know, I think if uh, if your main goal is to serve the song, I think you're going to come out on top in this town. You know, um, tenacity. You know, it's it's. Uh, I went through a lot of years. You know, I, I think the first year I was in Nashville, I I made seven hundred dollars. <laughs> you know, so I mean, uh, yeah, and that's that's. I wish I was lying. I think. Uh, I didn't even have a bank account. I kept all my money uh, in a country crock buttercup. The struggle uh, it makes it all sweeter, you know. Sticking through it, um, meeting the right people, getting breaks. You know, everyone's got a break. You know, um, uh, if anyone ever tells you they did it on their own, I don't believe that. I don't think you can do that. So, I had a lot of you know from my uncle who was a staff writer who let me sleep on his floor for the first year I moved here and didn't have to pay rent, you know. Uh, we had a one-bedroom apartment and I slept on the floor to Michael Knox, to Michael Rhodes, uh, to Bruno Dello, um, to, uh, to Kenny Vaughn. These guys who I met that really made me believe that if I did what I do and I stuck through it, then I would succeed. Uh, and, and all those people, especially Michael Knox, I owe, you know, great deal of my success to him. Belief. You know, took a bunch of kids into the studio, basically. Um, and gave him a chance. And he put me with Jason, and then we kind of built a band um, around that sound. It was it was so unique at the time. You know, we were a guitar band, which was really wasn't what country music was at that point. Now, you know, now it seems like, oh, everybody's got guitars, everybody's it's loud, but it wasn't that way when we started doing it. It was, uh, it was safer. And it was great music, but it was just different, you know. Um, so at the time, I think that's why it worked and connected, was that it, it wasn't overthought. It was just a guitar band, um, you know, rock players that were kind of learning how to be studio players, you know. Um, but great, great time, all those years of learning how to do this and, and the experience that we've gathered. You know, I, I moved here... To plan records and get off the road and end up, you know, being on the road <laughs> a lot. But it's like I said, making these records then taking them on the road was was a goal, and it's very till this day. Um, even on the old songs that you know, our old songs now, it never get tired of playing them. You, know, you feel connected to the, to what Jason Aldean is now, um, sonically. That's it's a great thing for us. I owe another big thanks um, to Roger Sadowski, who I've who Sadowski basses are are my tone. These are these are my tone. Uh, the PJ Five bass. He again is the guy who built me my first bass. Geez, when he when I didn't have anything going on, um, you know, I think it was '98. Ordered my first Sadowski. I could barely pay for it, um, and he he really to this day is just a, a saint of a man like he um for what he does for me um and in in supporting the younger players he's called me up the other day about a a, a young female bassist who um he's going to build something for because he believes in and and want to get my opinion and I, and I just it blew me away I was like god this guy doesn't have to do this but he does and and uh besides the great basses and craftsmanship and tone he's just a a, a great guy, you know, so I, I always feel at home holding these bases, you know. Um, my gear, you know, my amps, Aguilar the same way, Dave Boonshaft and David Venus and Aguilar up in New York, uh, same thing, came on when they didn't have to, got me a rig when they didn't have to, 
uh, and I've been there ever since. Record with their gear, play live with their gear. So yeah, Sadowski and Aguilar, um, Dean Markley Strings, thank you. You know, my string company, you know, they came on in 97 and I didn't have a gig. <laughs> so, you know, very, very good people. Uh, it really all works together, team effort. And, um, it's uh, very, very fortunate to have a team of people. I'm a big fan of people who are loyal. You know? Well, you know what, and, and it's sticking through the times. You know, the gay, all those people worked with me when I, before Jason had any success, um, and they stuck with it, and 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 they're very grateful as well. You know, I mean, you know, we're doing stadiums and arenas now, and and there's such a good feeling for me to be able to kind of repay that favor by getting them the exposure they deserve 